Like you, I hear all the gathering talk of another civil war. And perhaps like many of you, I refuse to accept this trajectory. I refuse to accept that this country has no future. I refuse to accept that America is just done. Partly because I have no other country. No matter how many times I have been told to go back to it. Um, for the record, I'm not going back to Cleveland. I think too many people in the pro-democracy cause are failing at our task because we've all but given up on persuasion. And historically, when people give up on changing minds, their recourse is often the use of force. Writing off your fellow citizens is the road to civil war. If this republic is to have a chance, we in the pro-democracy camp need to do more than condemn the fascists. We need to out-compete them. Oftentimes in politics, a transactional approach dominates. I am running for something and I want you to chip in $5, make 20 phone calls, drive 30 minutes to the polls, the end, transactions. Organizers who speak of meaning making view voters in a completely different way. They see voters and citizens generally as being in a constant state of processing the world. In this view, people are not little blue and red robots. They are complicated vessels of impulses and sentiments, and they are constantly receiving information from the world that is often confusing and needs to be sorted out. They notice changes in their town. Their workplace has problems. They hear things on the news. Their kids come home from school saying they learned a new thing the parents have never heard of. The far right and its media ecosystem have astutely understood that we live in an age of dizzying, discombobulating psychological transitions in technology, in gender roles, in race, in demographics, in the dominant view of our history, in the structure of the economy, in world trade. And so Tucker and Trump and other demagogues in the media and in politics inflame these psychological transitions by preying on stress and confusion and helping to array the experiences people are having into a fascist fantasy. They seize on and distort obscure local news stories to make already jittery Americans fear Chinese lab leaks and asylum seeker invasions and jihadists next door and undocumented rapists and George Soros plots. They make it make sense for voters, but they are making sense out of lies and hatred. And the pro-democracy movement too easily conflates everyday dupes of the far right's con with the leaders orchestrating that con. We need to hold the Tuckers and Trumps of the world accountable. But we need to win over not all, not most, but many of their followers, frankly, if America is to survive. This doesn't mean giving a pass to racists. It means recognizing racism as an entrenched social system of brainwashing that requires deep effort to uproot. The uncomfortable truth is that some of the most dangerous movements of our time have done much better than the well-meaning ones at giving citizens a sense of comfort and safety and membership in something bigger. For too long now, the pro-democracy movement has not had an adequate, positive counter-offering to the Trump rally, nor to homeschooling associations, hunting and fishing clubs, evangelical church networks, the Federalist Society, right-wing campus organizations, and any of a number of other means by which the right drops its abstract strivings down into the daily rhythms of people's lives. We need, as Bhaskar Sankara has written, to bring back the benign meaning of the political machine, which is to say, political parties that were organized and ubiquitous and locally rooted enough to have a representative in every building. Someone you could call if you got a confusing letter from the IRS or needed help fighting an eviction. That used to exist, it's gone. We need to reclaim the politics of the club. We sit together, we sing together, we pay each other's rent when times are hard. Frankly, right now, it is the worst people who are telling the best stories about America, and that is very dangerous. Now, I use the word best in heavy quotation marks because the only thing good in the far right story about America is how darkly effective it is. The far right vividly paints the future it seeks, and it knows exactly how it wants the story to end. All the white people living happily ever after and the rest of us gone or dead or at least knowing our proper place. It is time for the freedom movement to reclaim patriotism, its own authentic version of patriotism, and tell a big, beautiful, hopeful, galvanizing story about the country and where it needs to go. A story that gets people 
talking, singing from the rooftops, not just voting for you because they think the other side is batshit crazy, but because they are enthralled by your cause. We need to improve our skills of communication to be able to criticize the country's history and sins without making people feel we hate the country. Frankly, we should start flying that flag again, especially as more and more of the right's dupes turn their back on the American flag in favor of thin blue line flags on their cars and yards. When you drive your children out of your homes because you cannot accept the people they have become, or the people they love, or the names their hearts answer to, who is it who welcomes them at the other end of the bus route to cities far away? We do. We embrace them. We make them ours. We work and dance and march and room with them. We love your children when you are unable to. So don't lecture us about patriotism. We know all about loving people we don't know because we belong to something greater. We are falling on our face right now as a country because we are jumping high. We are attempting to do actually what no country has ever really done, to forge a country of all the world, a country made up of all the countries, a country without a center of identity, without a default idea of what a human being is or looks like, without a shared religious belief, without a shared language that is people's first language, a country bound instead by fundamental values of freedom and equality and hope. This fascist uprising we confront is not some powerful movement of the future. It is a last gasp, an authoritarian streak in our heritage that has long ensnared black and brown people, now coming for all people. It is a revolt against the future. We simply cannot give up on changing minds. We cannot give up on changing things. We cannot give up on this country. We cannot give up on each other. I stand before you today with no doubt that we can beat back this extremist madness in our midst and help America be what it has never been, but still can be. Thank you very much.